Hi guys, Kiki here from Perfume Passion. I'd like to share with you today morning time fragrances. I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to wear anything too heavy after I just wake up or if I'm out of the shower, I don't like to like wear a heavy amber or tobacco fragrance or leather or any like sharp floral vintage. I want something fresh, something lighter, um, something powdery might work. And I have here nine perfumes that I like to wear in the morning. And they're actually some of them are similar, some of, but there's also some really unique and different fragrances in here in this list. So starting off with one of my all-time favorites. Right now I'm just loving this fragrance so much. It's number 19 Poudre from Chanel. It's a green powdery fragrance. It features the note of galbanum. Um, green and powdery is not that common in fragrance, but it has like this beautiful fine mist. I love the sprayer. It's just the only thing about this fragrance is that it's not very long lasting. I say I get one or two hours out of this, that's it. But then I'm usually ready to move on to something new, so I like it anyway and I recommend it anyway, but I do have to say that. Um, second of all, I have this chocolate minty fragrance that also has some myrrh and some wheat. Um, it's called Jenny 22 from Pierre Guillaume. This is an older version when the house used to be called Parfumerie Generale, but it's the same fragrance. But this is the EDT version. It has lavender as well, and it has a note of syringa, which is a white flower, and some wheat. Very unusual. This is a completely unique fragrance. It, there, it doesn't resemble anything else in my collection or anything that I've ever tried, actually. Uh, Jenny at 22. And then I have one of my favorites from this year. Uh, this is one of the best new releases, I believe, that has come out in a long time. It's called Decas. It's from the house of Zerjoff. Uh, it has tobacco, tuberose, mandarin, but for me, it's basically, it's a, it's a balsamic fragrance. Um, it has a nice kind of vanillic musky base and it has like notes of opoponax. It has resins. It gives me kind of a eucalyptus vibe on top. So this is great for the morning time. It gives me kind of a spa kind of feeling, but when it dries down, it's also very suitable to like wear out for dinner or anywhere actually. It is just a beautiful, very unique kind of fragrance that might not be for everyone. It's very special. Uh, you must try that before buying. This, on the other hand, I might, even I might even recommend a blind buy of because it is so, so wearable. You could wear this trench from YSL um, anywhere, to any occasion, at any occasion, with anyone. It's completely non-offensive, citrus, iris, uh, fragrance. It has a little bit of fig. Um, it, it reminds me a little bit of Infusioned Iris from Prada, but this is more long-lasting, but it is a skin scent. It doesn't project that much, but it's just, oh, it's just a stunner. Even my mother likes this, and she doesn't even like perfume, so it gives you an idea about, you know, the wearability of this fragrance. And then I've got a new favorite from last summer, Pegaso, from the Italian house of Etro. It's actually a designer. They make, you know, expensive clothes and, and bags and things like that. The presentation is quite gorgeous. I love it. Etro. This is called Pegaso. It's a citrusy, woody fragrance. Um, I wear this a lot for layering. It's an EDT concentration, so quite light. Uh, longevity is not that great. I wear it like when I've, whenever I've, you know, sprayed on a little, I feel like I've, you know, something on that on that's too sweet or too heavy or too vanillic or too much tobacco. I can just kind of give it a lift with this. Um, it just, this, this works anytime. I don't, I usually kind of put it on during the end of the day when I need, you know, I need to be energized or something. It's just gorgeous. I, I love that one. Pegaso, I paid way too much for this. I paid like a hundred euro in a boutique. Uh, you can get it like for 40% less online. So check out the prices before you purchase this. My most recent purchase is this one, Antico Carusa from Perfume Roma. It is an almond fragrance that I normally don't like that much. I don't like what they typically combine almond with, like sugary notes like praline and sugar and uh, vanilla, and, and they usually end up too cloyingly sweet for me. Um, but in this fra fragrance, it's combined with lemon and orange blossom, and just like a hint of almond. So it's really refreshing, and the almond just gives kind of a little bit of a, a little edge to it, a little roundness to it, maybe a little butteriness. It's, oh, it's so, so light and fresh and beautiful. Um, a lot of Perfume Aroma's fragrances are quite heavy and potent. This is not heavy at all. Um, 
I just, oh my God, I love this one so much. I haven't had a time to wear it so much yet. Also from the house of Perfume Aroma is Orangea. This one opens up a little sharp, I'll have to say that. Uh, it has a very strong greenness to it from Pettigrain. You know, like broken up leaves and branches from the orange tree. Um, uh, it's hard to describe this fragrance, but it also has mint. It has cedar needles. Uh, so it's a little piney. Um, and then it has bergamot. But when, if you can just kind of get by the opening, five, 10 minutes, it kind of starts warming up on your skin and starts to kind of develop a little bit of sweetness. But it's a really beautiful fragrance. It reminds me a little bit of Mandarin Mandarin from Serge Lutens. Um, I wear this mostly in the summertime, sometimes in the morning um, because of that sharp opening. It's not always what I'm in the mood for. And then I'd like to recommend New Look 1947 from the house of Dior. This is Maison Dior or Dior Exclusifs. It's one of the few from this line that I think is full bottle worthy, but this one sure is. It has pink pepper. It has like five floral notes. I think it's ylang ylang, gardenia. Um, ro it has some rose. It has tuberose and jasmine, but I also get a note of iris, although it's not listed here. Um, and then it has benzoin and vanilla. But it's a light fragrance, and it also gives me a little bit of a medicinal kind of quality, almost a little mentholic, maybe? Men, men, is that even a word? It, it's fresh, and I can't really see any notes that are listed that I find like fresh notes. So there's more in here than is described in, in the listing of the notes. And then last but not least, Honoré Delights from Ex Nihilo. It's a French house. They use mostly natural ingredients. That Therefore, it is quite pricey. I think I paid 170 euro for this 50 ml bottle. They're never on sale. Um, they do have some kind of travel size, I think, that you can get. Um, people sometimes sell them. They buy a pack of three and then they sell one. So you can probably find some of those secondhand, perhaps. This reminds me of Woman in Gold from Killian. Although this is fresher, uh, this is a little bit more, a little bit less sweet, maybe. Um, that one is also more potent than this. This is a little more subtle, a little more like everyday wearable kind of fragrance. There's iris, there's orange blossom, there's a hint of vanilla, although it's not listed. It has bergamot and neroli. It is just a gorgeous fragrance. I sampled this really well before I purchased, and I have not regretted it. So this is also great for the morning time, or actually any time. I can wear this dancing because I know I won't offend anyone. It's not strong. Um, it is just just gorgeous. I think it leans a little more feminine perhaps, but I know guys, uh, friends of mine that have bought this and are very happy with it too. So um, yeah, those were my nine fra fragrances for the morning time. Which ones are your favorites?